What do you think gives you a better result? Cycling every day for 30 days and putting hours and hours on the bike or doing an hour on the bike for 30 days straight following a proper nutrition plan. What happens when you cycle every day for 30 days eating whatever you want and then you compare it to eating 30 days with proper nutrition? Hi, I'm Jesse, and today I am going to get into the nitty gritty and compare my last few challenges on the bike. The first challenge was based on distance and time in the saddle. In the first 30 days, I spent almost 70 hours on the bike. Each ride was approximately, on average, two hours. Some days I did five or six hours on the bike, other days I did 90 minutes, and approximately burning 1,500 to 2,000 calories per ride. In that challenge, I rode 1,124 kilometers. And I ate healthy, but I didn't shy away from eating a burger or meeting up with friends for a beer. I didn't count calories, and I didn't really follow an eating plan at all. So this is a recap of the first 30 days. Day one was a lot harder than I expected. Day three, four, and five were a little bit easier. Day six and seven were consecutive 90 minute rides. Fast forward through weeks two and three, where I progressively added a little bit more and then a little bit more, tapering back and adding a little bit more. Day 18. And there you have it. 100K on an indoor trainer, done. Now I always believe in challenges to finish strong. This brings me to day 25. 160.9 kilometers or 100 miles or a century ride indoors. Why? Because it's snowing and it hasn't stopped all day. In the end, I achieved what I was looking for, to simply feel stronger and more comfortable in the skin that I'm in. I gained a lot of energy, but I only lost four pounds and I felt a lot more comfortable on the bike and in front of the mirror. The 30 days in between these two challenges was basically a hard reset. With Christmas, New Year's, and all the festivities with family and friends. And right after New Year's, I had dental surgery and that set me back. I had to shift to 15 minutes on the bike max due to doctor's orders. And I wasn't sure what to eat when he said you're only able to eat soft foods. So starting the next 30 days, I was at 188. The weight that I was at before, after losing the four pounds, I physically and mentally felt as if I was starting a completely new challenge. I had lost my endurance and I was lacking a lot of energy. With not knowing what to eat, I went back to what I know. Back in 2015, I tried a product called Isogenix. I had a great transformation. It's actually why I started this YouTube channel. But over the last three to four years, I haven't used a product at all. Life just got in the way and I kind of forgot about it. So because Isogenix is two shakes, a few little extras and a healthy dinner, it aligns with my soft diet restrictions from my dentist. Which brings me to my next challenge. Day one, day 61, I enrolled in the Tour de Zwift and the Wahoo Climbing Challenge. Day one to day seven was tough. Day two, day three, I popped my tire. Day four, new tire. Day five, day six. Day seven, which brings me to a week one recap. I'm down two and a half pounds. I'm starting to get my strength back and feel a lot more comfortable in the saddle. Day eight, day nine, day 10, day 11, day 12, day 13, day 14. At the end of week two, I'm down four pounds and I'm starting to notice a lot of improved strength on the bike and the hour is starting to get a lot easier. Day 15, day 16, day 17, day 18. Day 19, day 20, day 21. I actually increased my FTP, totally unexpected. I obviously didn't record it because I wasn't expecting to increase my FTP. Day 22, day 23, day 24, day 25, day 26, day 27, day 28. Day 29 was painful. This is what we call the hour of power. We're increasing the FTP. Time to see what the last 89 days did. What came next, I had no idea was even possible. I shattered my FTP. I pushed for a full hour. It was a sweaty, sweaty hour of power. Day 30, which is also day 90. Check mark. 
done. So to give you a recap of the first 30 days to the last 30 days, in the first challenge, I did 1124 kilometers and I did about 6,000 meters of elevation. From day 31 to day 60, I did 470 kilometers since I had to dial it back. During the second challenge, day 61 to 90, I did 787 kilometers. And in the second challenge, I not only completed the Tour de Zwift, which is eight races consecutively, but I also achieved the Wahoo Climbing Challenge, which is 6,000 meters of elevation matching the first challenge. So within the first challenge, I did 70 hours on the bike. I had over 6,000 meters of elevation and 1,124 kilometers distance traveled versus an hour a day on the bike. So 30 hours over the course of 30 days. And I had over 6,000 meters of elevation. I traveled 787 kilometers. And on average, I burned 1,500 to 2,000 calories per ride in the first 30 days versus 600 to about 900 calories in the second challenge. Yes, I put a lot more time in the saddle. Yes, I did a lot more kilometers, but without following a proper nutrition plan, I didn't get the results that I was actually really, really hoping for. This brings me to the moment of truth. I'm down to 180.2, a loss of eight pounds in this challenge and 12 pounds for the entire challenge. So to give you the answer, does it matter what you eat? The answer is yes, as the results don't lie. If you enjoyed this video, watch my next video and consider subscribing.